Hey, this is Father Sean here for the Daily Reflection. And today I just wanted to reflect a little bit about, um, about vaccines and kind of morality related to, to vaccines, especially from the Catholic perspective. It's probably not something any of us got in CCD class. I know I sure as heck didn't until I got to um, the bioethics course at the seminary. So um, I, I know parents sometimes raise this question, like, do I have to get my child vaccinated? And I know there's been stuff in the news, like about anti-vax parents, and sometimes they're labeled as whatever, old-fashioned, superstitious. Um, and there's reasons, and I don't know all the reasons why people wouldn't uh, give their, have their kids vaccinated. You know, there's stuff like if you have a healthy lifestyle or um, vaccines weaken the immune system, all those sorts of things. And those are, those are different reasons. Um, the Catholic like bioethical issues with vaccines come in from probably a, a whole different perspective. And I don't claim to be an expert in, expert in this. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not a medical, I'm not a moral theologian. I don't have a doctor in moral theolo theology. I don't know, you know much about like the science. Micro I'm not a microbiologist. I don't know any of this. People know that better than me. But I do know enough just to be dangerous and probably to say something that somebody's going to say, Father, you don't know your science. And you're probably right. But anyways, so the origin of how's a vaccine made, right? So a vaccine is, uh, you know, there, there's specific cell lines that are that are growing and then, you know, they're whatever, you know, they're given a little bit of the um, of the disease to, to transfer so that the and then when it's inoculated with it. And I don't know all this right terminology would become vaccinated. So the issue from the uh, from the Catholic perspective is these original cell lines were some of them, not all of them, of course, were cultivated from aborted fetuses. So they're not fetuses that were directly killed just to get their cells. They were aborted, and then after the child was killed, and then the 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 um, the um, the cells were harvested from taken from the child. And, um, and so the, the two that are, are most popular, the two lines, I wrote them down, I did a little bit of research, HGK293 and PERC6. These two lines were taken from aborted fetuses and then they're, they're used, they're, they continue to, to multiply. So not those original cells aren't still alive, but they've, they've multiplied, they've, they've lived on in cultures. And so, uh, the, so the question is, well, can we have a vaccine that comes from these aborted fetuses? Like, that's a, that's a real question. And, um, and so this was actually taken up in a church document called Dignitas Personae, the dignity of the human person. Uh, it was published a number of years ago by the, by the Vatican, the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith. And it touched like every year and especially every decade, the issues in bioethics and medical ethics just keep growing and growing and growing. So, um, so you know, even five years, it becomes out of date because science moves so fast, which on the one hand is good, but another one, it's, it's hard to keep up and kind of to evaluate and reflect. So anyways, the question is, are we morally culpable if we use a vaccine that originated and was kind of used to, um, was developed um, by an aborted fetus. And so there's there's so many differences and so many nuances here. Um, like a, 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 a vaccine could have been developed from one of these lines from an aborted fetus, but now it's no longer produced from that. Like they gained the knowledge from this, but now but now it's it's comes from an animal, you know, it's grown in a it's grown in a chicken cell or whatever it, whatever some of the vaccines are. So so let me uh, bust out my old uh, my old bioethics textbook here. Um, so there's different levels of cooperation and evil. So the researchers that originally did this have one level versus those who continue to produce a vaccine that, it, that utilizes aborted fetus, or at least at one point did, those who distribute, and then those who are the parents or those who themselves are vaccinated by this. And so the highest level of culpability and to say we can't, if you're a Catholic researcher, you cannot use a line in your research from an aborted fetus. You have to use a different line that was ethically gained. Makes perfect sense. Less, um, a, a less culpability, but still not good as those who distribute these, um, these viruses, those that prolong, but they are their material cooperation, we call it, um, which is, is not good. So there is something immoral there, not nearly as serious as those that originated it. 
and and we are um, Catholics, we are obliged to do our research on this, right? And so if there's an option between one that works just as well, one that was gained by morally licit means and more, one that was gained by immoral means, namely abortion, we should always choose the one that was gained by moral means. If there's only one that comes from aborted fetuses, there are certain uh, reasons why we could use that, that vaccine. One, there's no alternatives available. Two, uh, we have to encourage researchers to find ways to use morally licit means, whatever that means, whatever that means, writing to the government to, to help fund this or, or encouraging those that we know or writing or whatever it may be to support research that uses ethical means. Three, uh, there are serious health risks in refusing the vaccine. I mean, we could talk about the coronavirus, especially with some of our elderly um, people, those who are more at risk. There are some serious health risks if there's a vaccine available and it's not used. Um, and then fourth, if this is viewed as a temporary solution. So we use this vaccine, the only one that's available, and then we, we always hope and look towards the day when there's one that's morally licit. So I know that's a lot in, uh, in, about moral theology and the levels of, uh, of cooperation with evil and when can we cooperate with an evil, how, how much cooperation that is in an evil action. But it has to give us something to think about, especially, uh, you know, we're always hoping for a vaccine to this coronavirus, but we, of course, would like one that, was, um, that came about through a, uh, through a moral means. So I don't know all the status of what's going on out there with the coronavirus vaccine, but it gives us something serious to think about, to consider um, how vaccines are, uh, are come brought about. And I think the, the best place, if you're curious more about this sort of thing, the National Catholic Bioethics Center is awesome. I, uh, I actually, I support the National Catholic Bioethics Center with, uh, with a donation every, every now and then. They'll send out an appeal. They do incredible work. I, uh, I also subscribe. They have a, a monthly newsletter that's just, it's so short. It's great just to keep my, my mind kind of fresh on medical issues. Um, I think it's called Ethics and Medics. Um, and it's, it's just a great little thing to, to kind of say what's going on in the world of bioethics because it's not something that moves so fast. I'm not in school anymore. It's something I do my best to keep up on. So, um, so if you have some, you know, you want to support a, a good research and policy making or policy influencing organization in the United States, the National Catholic Bioethics Center, phenomenal place, absolutely phenomenal, based out of uh, Philadelphia. Anyways, that's Father Sean with the daily reflection, one on uh, on. Um, ethical issues related to the vaccine. So uh, take care. God bless. Be assured of my prayers and uh, take your vitamins.